uh, get your pens and notebooks ready because these are the experts. If I'm going to be pushed on a selection, as it will, I'd have to go with Royal Irish Bazaar. Okay, but you're but but you're looking at it from a I'm long looking term. long term view. Yeah, Sandy? yeah, I agree with Catherine. Um, it's interesting that Gary Moore does well in juveniles as well. Yeah. He's got a horse called Colour Extreme, uh, won twice during the summer. Currently about nine to one. I'd like to see how that one jumps. Uh, he could possibly yeah. be for the future. I, okay. Yeah, I'd agree with that. I think Kulawar Extreme is the one that will be brought on. I think a bit of cutting the ground suiting. I can see him winning at Sandown come November. There's a juvenile hill there. That'll be right up his street. For today, durable man for me. Durable man. Uh, let's move on to the, the 2.15 at market race. And this is a, a fantastic um, listed race, uh, hurdle race. Very competitive. I mean, there has been some, some money for the uh, John Joe Nil train prompter. Um, any, any views on... <laughs> Let's not, talk about, let's not talk about the train, let's talk about the horse. Would you like to go first, yeah, Catherine? Go on, Catherine. <laughs> Prompter is my nap of the day. Right. I uh, was absolutely delighted to see him turn up here. He's, uh, he's been eye-catching the last twice on the flat. Uh, ran into fourth and Newbury. Run at Kempton as well. He, he, win, he won at Bangor around this time of year. It just everything is absolutely... Uh, last night before... Nap I was, of the day. Nap Your of the day. nap of the day. Before I went to bed last night, I saw that there was money coming for him. Tweeted Dave. I know Dave has a completely different opinion. Well, I, well why, why, yeah. why, Dave? My, I, I tell you for why. This, for a horse that uh, the talent of Prompter is is about hundred rated on the flat at one point, wasn't he? Mm -hmm. He doesn't win enough. He's won two from twenty three, and they were Mickey Mouse races. So you know, anyway. Yeah, I've, I've my notes. So he was average in his novice runs. I've got. He needs a fast run race. I think that the novice runs particularly didn't suit him. I think that he does need a, the handicap will help going faster. I think he's high enough in the handicap at one hundred and twenty two. I couldn't be backing him at one hundred thirty. There's been a bit of money for, for Wilt, uh, Waltered Silk. Any, any feelings yeah, on that one? That's my fancy. Yeah. Um, he, I know he's had his wind problems. Um, but we, all, we all have. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but the trainer, since he switched to good ground, has improved dramatically. He, uh, f he f you know, he's won at the, the track twice in his novice races. But he was called Golden Hoof, who is well regarded in the Key Henderson yard. He's currently rated about 130. Um, he had a spin on the flat round Yarmouth. I think he could be... I think this race could be set up for him today. Um, he's currently seven to one, and he's—he's he's actually. I've gone against Catherine. This is my nap of the day. Oh, so, so there's two naps silk. in this one two race at this race. Do you have a nap, Dave, or you just got? I, a am view? Got a, I am got a nap in this. I've got a view. I take two against the field. I think um, Lord Atry has improved no end um, since his run in this last year, and he, he got beat the width of a Rizzler in this last year, and that was the first time they rode Lord Atry different. Up to that point, he'd been a hold-up horse. Andrew Tinkler sent him to the front on the far side after the third hurdle and tried to have a go at making all, as it were. Um, and he only just got found out. Since then, they've ridden him far more positively, and I was really taken with the way that he, he attacked his, his, his hurdles at, Tom at Stratford. Tom Scudamore, No. Uh, Nico de Boinville, who right, rode him okay. at Stratford, taking five off. Dave, right. um, do you think he needs an easy lead, though? He does need an easy lead, but, I, but there's a lot of hold-up horses in here. There's this an is, awful lot of hold-up This is very horses. different to Stratford, this course. He's proved he goes around it, though, I think, last year. You know, and he's shown he goes on, and he goes on toaster as well, so he's not a one-trick pony. I think it's, you know, it's quite a adaptable. Uphill, toaster. Exactly. It's, well, yeah. that's what I'm saying. You know, he's yeah. adaptable as, as regards conditions. I don't necessarily think he's just a Stratford horse. Yes, he goes particularly well there, but you know, he got beat off. I think it was about an 11 pound lower market. A, a short heading this last year. Yeah, he's got. Okay. Shown he'll go around. Okay. I think he's got a chance. Catherine, any, any, any yeah, more? Yeah, I think on? my main danger to Prompter would be Itirad. He, he was he was a very easy winner over course and distance last time. It was I know he didn't beat much, but it was the manner of the victory. He's the main danger, but it's Prompter for me. Okay. Prompted for you. Yeah. I'd, I'd be quick about Itarad. I'd be con concerned about his jumping. I think he's too careful. He okay. his hurdles. We're going nap against nap here. Prompter, yeah. Water your nap. silk, Lucy Wadden. Um, I agree Selection with what says. Uh, the other one I was going to go with was Are You Know Yourself? We finished behind Lord Atry at Stratford. Needed that run. That was his comeback run. He'll go a lot closer today. I think he'll go. Yard right. in form as well. Yard bang in form. And you can guarantee. I, I know prompt has been laid out, but this has been laid out for it as well. You can see. Now, I mean, is this to you at the start of the jump season? Because there's some, you know, it's listed races. Yes. We're going to the second one in a moment. Is, it, is, is this the start of it yet? It's not quite the start. It, Maybe in a sort of couple of weeks' time, I'd class as yeah. the start. Right. But this is a nice, nice introduction. Nice, the, the curtain's yeah. halfway yeah. up. Uh, yeah, that's right. I was just about to <laughs> say, I think this is the time now when us National Hunt aficionados, we come out of our summer slumber, yeah. <laughs> blinking and rubbing our eyes. You I'm know, surprised you're not sitting there with coats on. It's, <laughs> it's, it's been a long summer, Peter, I tell you. Yeah. It's been a long, long summer. But th this is where the summer meets the autumn, these sort of things. Yeah, let's talk about the, the, the total home of the king size, Paul's Handicap <laughs> Chase, which is a lot to say when I've got my teeth in. Um, any, any immediate views on that, Catherine? Yeah, obviously finger on the pulse, former Cheltenham Festival winner. Actually, he, he ran so well in the summer plate, <coughs> market raising last time out. One was 
won at Stratford in the summer season. He's sort of, with Morris Lennon taking the claim off, he's, he's only carrying 10 1. He's still a very, very classy horse. He might not be as fast as he used to be. He's going to be in that. This is very, very hard. You've got Bold Chief. He's only up six pounds from his from his last win. I know Harry Fry is very bullish about him this morning. I have to give him respect. I did have a quick look at Well Regarded. Well Regarded actually went into my notebook two years ago on a fourth at Cheltenham. But the only the only problem with him is that he, he doesn't jump that well. But I've been a huge fan of Gavin Sheehan's riding this year. I think he's improved. You know, obviously Dave would have seen Gavin Sheehan ride an awful yeah, lot. He's he, very, very yeah, good. he's very much the finished article now. Couldn't really, uh, Dave's old friend Buck, Buck Mulligan, he, mm. just, he just chucks it in one too many there's times. Been a lot of, yeah. There's been a lot of money, um, Dave, for Davis Hill. Back Davis to about Hill, five to when the declarations came out for this race earlier in the week, Davis Hill was the one that, that really sort of caught my eye a little bit. Um, for the sort of right reasons and the wrong reasons. Um, Nigel Twist and Davis always throws a curveball in this race. Last year he threw in Mahogany Blaze and we all looked and thought, that's a two-miler that doesn't jump very well and actually ran really well in the race until his stamina gave way in the last sort of 400 yards. And there's another one, Davis Hill, that was formerly with Mary Hambro, who trains just, just down the road from Nigel. Still with the Hambros, as you pointed yeah. out this morning. Richard Hambro still has the horse. Um, goes well after a break. Got his ground today. Doesn't look badly handicapped. Generally jumps well. And this is Nigel Twiston Davis's time of the year. He could train the, the office yeah. captain. I'd race. be concerned about the 518-day gap. Um, I know you said he goes well fresh, but still that's a long time off the track in such a competitive race like this and this is very competitive there's another horse that goes fresh here and that is uh, king of the night and it's priced around about 14 to 1 has anyone yeah. had a look at that one yeah, yeah. yeah. he is quite interesting I, I, my notice is that he's looked regressive regressive uh, yeah there, there are reasons yeah, yeah Catherine mentioned to me off, yeah. off air that well tell us he's had yeah, he, yeah well he, I mean he, he'll love the ground yeah but he does he has had problems bursting I believe he, you know he's right, broken okay. blood vessels uh, David and I saw him we thought he was going to absolutely hose up at Exeter didn't oh. we in April both of us yes. backed him uh, he saw, but he only lost that day. He absolutely fluffed the second last. That's right, yeah, but but he has had his problems. Obviously, first run for Markham Jefferson. Yeah, I mean, on his ability, he's a massive prize. But he has problems. We did mention uh, Emma Lavelle's got another runner in the race called Boogler. Now this yeah. horse is yeah, sort of like mm. you know, mm. it's been very disappointing. Um, I still think there's ability there though. It's just he, he, yeah. back back a couple of years in 2009, he won a, a graded agree. race yeah. at Aintree. Um, had some very good form back in the back. Of, he's got Aidan Coleman on today. Uh, maybe not today, but I'd keep an eye on Booger for the future. I think that one's, I think Emma Laval will have that one, a race for that one sometime this season. I, I would agree with that, and I think bearing in mind she's had another similar type to this that was a bit disappointing in Kangaroo Court. Won mm. recently at Newton. Won a good race at Newton Abbott, and yeah. we were all sort of writing Kangaroo Court. Off, said, oh, John Joe Neil um, there, didn't he? That's right, and I think you know similar to that. Boogler's a very sort of similar type. Looked okay. very decent as a juvenile. Oh, just selections. Lost finger, on finger on the pulse. Finger on the pulse. Finger on the pulse. Oh, I've, we, I've one I've not mentioned is Alco. Um, came mm -hmm. second the summer plate back in 2012. Up six pound from that. Dougie Costello. One thing we did touch on again. Bowen is sort of see he's coming sort of the end of his time he, during the summer. But Peter Bowen's very good. Sort of towels off this sort of time of the season. Um, Alco's currently twelve to one, and I like Alco. I think there's a big race in him, and it might could be today. Yeah, yeah for those that like Alco, Bowen did have the, the bumper winner at Worcester yesterday. Yeah. Just to sort of give you a bit of hope that he's yeah. not completely gone yet. For me, Twirling Magnet, who okay. was one that we've not mentioned, but I actually sort of made a mention of him back in July when he actually came down at Worcester. He was going to split some good horses that day. Buffalo Land won, uh, won the race, and I think Brassett was in there as well. And I actually made note of him and I said, I think he'll win a big race at market racing this summer. Is he Lo and behold, he, he rocks up here, so I can't desert him now. Is okay. He, is he first time cheek pieced as well? He is as well yeah. today, yeah. That's interesting. Very interesting. Yeah, I see now. Good cheek Okay. We, we've, we are going to move forward for some reason in our production schedules, even though uh, um, I don't know why this happens. 4.30 at market racing. We are going to go back to the other races um, later on. This is the um, your favourite pool bets at Tote Pool Handicapper. Quite a short favourite here. Um, in the Diane Sayer trained call Baranka. Yeah. Um, one at Perth a couple of days ago, uh, won easily. Um, I actually want to talk about a horse called Marmas here. Okay. Which is uh, trained by John Mackey, ridden by Brian Hughes. Funny enough, <laughs> when I was looking for a horse a couple of well, back into Octo October 2012, I actually emailed Marcus Tregoni to ask about the availability of Marmas. Mm. And because it won a two mile Lingfield all weather race, uh, I mean, it impressed me that day. And unfortunately, he'd already been entered in the sales, and he went through for about 12,000 guineas. 
I noted that this horse would probably want to trip in time. Today's only over, was it two mile three? I think in time we need three miles. But I have seen there's been money for it this morning. I think it opened up at 14. I think it's short seven or eight to one now. Um, I think he needs good ground as well. I think that's crucial to him. It'd be interesting if the money keeps coming. OK, Dave. If the cool Baranka that won at Perth two days ago turns up, he'll probably beat these. Um, I agree with everything that Thomas said regarding Marmas. I was there when he won that day at Market Raising, and again he went into a few eye catchers that day. I, I don't understand why they've not opted in three miles. John Mackey said at the time he's going to need three mile. And uh, There's a couple in this race, actually, that are two mile three. You think they need further? It's, it's going to be too short for Marmas. I think, they're going to, I think they'll, they'll give him a more positive ride today. Um, I think the money is each way money. They've looked. The bottom two couldn't win if they started now. So you've effectively only got you know five, six in the race that have got any sort of a chance. And if they're a bit well, more positive... if I started right now and run, run over there? And I, I think you'd probably pick up some prize money. I think that's a little bit harsh, <laughs> though. Uh, yeah, I, I would actually expect to see... I'd be on Marmus when he gets up upped in trip, which I think we will see on the next start. I uh, agree with Dave. If Kulbaranka is anything like he was at Perth the other day, he's, he's my selection.